Hey guys, so today I'm actually going to show you some of my very favorite watercolors in the whole world and we're going to do a little demo with them. Okay, so these are actually Daniel Smith watercolors. This is what my little set looks like. So these are the swatches for my regular Daniel Smith paints. There are regular Daniel Smith colors. I'm going to link everything below. Then there's this amazing line that I am madly in love with. They're Daniel Smith brand. They're Primatech watercolors. So I don't know if you can see from these swatches, but look at this incredible granulation. Um, so let me stress real quick. They're all Daniel Smith, but they're not all Primatech. So these three at the top and then this purple right here, they are not Primatech. They're just regular Daniel Smith. And you can see the difference. Um, they're smoother colors. And then all the ones that are the Primatech, you can see how grainy all these colors are. And that's because they are mineral pigments. Some people are not big fans of granulation. They prefer their color smoother, like this purple up here and these um, yellows and orange up there. I love me some good granulation. I love how it looks. I think it is fabulous. And that's what we're gonna look at today. You know, I just did a quick little sketch here. I didn't do a lot of clear definition because really what I just wanna show you is how awesome these colors are and how really they mimic all these other natural effects. So let's get started. So. Right now, I am dipping my brush in a color called Hematite. It is supposed to be this beautiful gray, but let's look, let's see what happens. So, oh my gosh, look at this. Even right up here, you can see right away the granulation is happening already. I did use a lot of water here. So again, I love the natural effects of granulation, especially when you think of like an old chateau. So I'm going to be very, just sort of very loose and sort of liberal today with how I have these, how I'm going to shade this stuff. Because again, I'm just trying to show you the more dramatic, the better. I'm just want I want to show you these effects. And a lot of them come when the paint is dried or drying. So we're just going to leave that there for now. The amazing thing about Primatech is that what happens is when they dry, you they almost reveal like an undercolor. So as they're drying, you're like, oh my gosh, there's actually brown in this. And in this one, in Hematite, I always get these undertones of like gold. Like, And this, I don't know if you can see down here, it's already, it's almost this like rosy color. It's very interesting. So I'm just doing a couple other little areas where it can bleed. Oh, and I should mention this is cold press watercolor paper. Okay, so we're using cold press for this. So let's go in the back. I'm just gonna do a couple more with the Primatech. I'm just wetting the page now. A little more, uh, or with the Hematite, I should say. It's all Primatech, we're only gonna use Primatech today. Uh, but this is the Hematite. Maybe I should use perhaps a smaller brush for these guys in the back. Um, okay, over here. And I do love this effect, like when, again, when you see these old castles, this old stone, it does always have this sort of um, almost yellowed, washed out look that I'm going for here. Again, I'm doing it super quick. I just wanna show you the effects. Um, one thing I'm trying to teach myself, so many things, many things guys, many things. One of them is trying not to overdraw or overpaint, trying to leave things alone when they are at their best. Sometimes I will be honest, I don't know how other artists do it, but for me, sometimes I feel like when I'm very much in the zone, I have an instinct for when to do that. And sometimes I don't. So when I'm in the zone, it's like I know when to stop. And sometimes I don't always. So I think training myself to be more conscientious about it is a good, a good thing. Okay. So we can see some of this drying is happening. I want to sort of bring more of this effect in. I want this to be this sort of ancient chateau. I really did imagine it sitting in this sort of um, little island. A friend of mine sent me a picture of a French Chateau, that's probably what inspired this, honestly. In this wintry scene, I'll link it below so you guys can look at it. I'm not looking at it right now, like I, I don't have a reference shot for this at all, so I'm not trying to paint that castle. It just got chateaus on the brain for me, so. Obviously right now all we're seeing is the gray. 
um, but we're gonna do a little more of the effect. So let's see, so I have some other colors here. So I've got one called Bronzite. Um, it's very sparkly, very, very sparkly. So again, everything has more than one color, guys. I remember getting in trouble in preschool. I would hope this would never happen these days, but you know, I bet it does. I got in trouble in preschool for painting um, tree trunks. I was drawing tree trunks and painting them purple. And I remember my teacher getting mad at me, which to me is just atrocious and so not the way to ever teach art. But she got mad at me saying that tree trunks are brown. And I fought her and continued to get in trouble, but stood my ground. And I said, no, they're not. They are more purple than they are brown. And I hold to that. I think that they are a lot more purple than they are brown. Um, okay, so we've got this lovely, lovely granulation going on here. All right. And we do want to stress and emphasize certain areas. Remember what we've learned about contrast, which actually isn't much. We haven't gone over contrast very much, but it's also knowing where to put the contrast and then when to leave things alone with that. When to just let it do its thing. Okay, let the watercolors just kind of use their native intelligence to sort of tell a story. Um, okay, so then I'm gonna move on to, again, I was hoping this to just be a quick demo for Primatex. So then let's look at this. This color is amazing. It's another Primatex, or another, um, yeah, prime. Guys, listen, I'm sorry, I'm so annoyed. My camera, in true tech fashion, it uh, stopped recording because the card was full and I did not know it. And in that time, I went on to create this lovely hill. So I'm sorry you missed that, but it really wasn't very much. So all is well. This is a Daniel Smith Primatech uh, color called Serpentine Green, or Serpentine Genuine. And what I was saying before I was rudely cut off by my camera was um, that this color is really amazing in that, um, like the other Primatech watercolor, it also has like an undercolor that is really amazing when you see it dry. It's just really awesome and it's, kind of a brownish so look here so since I had to spend some time reformatting my memory card and everything it's had time to dry a bit so you can see the brown here and that I did not add brown it's just I guess these mineral pigments they have this natural not just the granulation but the sort of um, those additional colors which is uh, incredible I love it so beautiful so, okay, so we're gonna be pretty dramatic with our castle on a little mound with a moat around it. I do like how dramatic these colors get. So again, we're just gonna go for it and be pretty dramatic. So, and I think I, I said before, I think it got cut off. I was talking about ivy. So we are definitely gonna go for some ivy, guys. Um, I don't know what a castle on a little moat would be without some ivy, right? You need some ivy. So I might leave it like this for now. When I really am in the zone, I get very brave with my choices. And I feel like I need to replicate that for when I'm not completely in the zone, which is when I'm talking as I draw. Uh, that is not a natural state for me. So I have to find a way to replicate all of this. You know, life as an artist and an author and all these things, it is such a strange life, guys, in that you have to make friends with your own mind these really weird ways. I don't know that everyone is forced to. I really don't. Ooh, okay, so that's getting very dark. So I don't want the bottom of the castle to be super dark here. I want, um, if anything's dark down here, I kind of want it to be the ivy when we get to that point. So. I'm gonna color it in a little bit, but I think, I think I'm gonna blot also with some, oh guys, look, look at this, sorry. I know I'm jumping around, I'm so excited though. Look, 
at the brown that we're seeing. No brown added. This is just the Serpentine Genuine. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so I'm just wetting it. I'm preparing it for the ivy because I do want, when we do the ivy, I do want it to bleed a bit. Definitely put chateaus on my mind and just the romance of them and the just, you know, I'm not romanticizing living in that time. I know better than that. But just the idea of that being the architecture in your mental landscape. I mean, can you imagine? Um, okay, yeah, so I'm trying to be brave, guys. I'm trying to be brave with my choices and not just, and not do too much when the watercolors are kind of, this is going to sound so pretentious and uh, obnoxious, and I apologize for that in advance, but, you know, when the watercolors are kind of telling you what they want, because um, they do, I realize what that sounds like, guys. I Again, I apologize. I'm very aware when things like that come out of my mouth. I'm like, oh my goodness. Even if they're true, <laughs> sometimes they are. So, okay. So right now, um, quickly, I'm adding a few other drops of another Primatech Green. It's called Green Appetite Genuine. Just as amazing. A slightly different green. It's got a little more blue in it. I'm just feeling like we need a bit of that. So let's do that. Oh, oh gosh, guys. This makes me really want to go to France and Germany and Scotland. The Primatech colors are so cool that they help you be brave. They help you be brave. And by brave, I just mean taking risks, doing bold things with your picture, which you kind of have to do if you're kind of, if you're the kind of watercolorist who depends on these effects that watercolors do, which everyone is to different degrees, of course. But if you're very dependent on those, you've really got to be brave. Um, otherwise, your watercolors won't get a chance to impress you. Okay, guys, let's do some ivy. I will admit, this might come as a surprise. I don't think I've done much ivy in my life. And I also am a little hesitant because I kind of like where it is right now without the ivy. Maybe I'll just do a little bit. Let's see what it looks like. It kind of looks like trees right now. I think we're going to have to have it crawl up here to the crenellation. I think these are called crenellations, guys. I know people who are experts in this castle lingo is what a rampart and a buttress and a crenellation is. What is going on here? Why is that like day glow green? Um, I know I just said to trust your watercolors, but I hate that color. So I don't trust it. I'm going to take it away. But notice what's crazy is underneath was this brown. It had no intention of staying that weird day glow color. It was just nice and brown down there. Okay, so I like the ivy there. That's kind of working. Not too bad. Let's try it maybe up the main tower here. You know guys, I always wondered how happy ivy really is. Climbing things like stone, like is it, is it satisfied? It's a plant, so maybe all it needs is just moisture at its roots and sunlight. Even though doesn't ivy notoriously grow in darker places? You can tell I have nothing approaching a green thumb. I don't know what I'm talking about with plants, guys. No clue. But I have cared enough about ivy in my life to wonder and to hope that when it's climbing stone, it's not just settling, that it's actually happy, doing something it likes, and that the stone is a good, a good home. I always kind of imagine it would rather be climbing wood just because wood feels like wood feels like uh, you know like the brethren of ivy because it's also organic 
I'm going to stop talking about this now because I can tell I'm sounding less and less informed as I go along. Okay, so we may leave it there. Again, guys, I am really trying not to overdraw, overpaint, all of that. It is such a danger. We love to indulge. We love to keep going. And I just don't always think that's the best thing. I think sometimes just let it go. I'm sure there's a metaphor there. I'm sure there's a life lesson there. I'm sure that much could be said for doing that in other areas of life. But to be able to get you this metaphor successfully, I'd have to think on it. I don't think I could pull it off right now. So let's figure out what to do, whatever these are called, the top, the tops of uh, towers in castles. I know they've got a name. I know it's probably an amazing name. I know that castle enthusiasts would be mortified at my lack of uh, understanding of these things. I'm gonna go back to the amazing bronzite I was using before to add some brown. Let's just see how this looks. It might not look that great. It, we might want, what's well, not bad. We, I was thinking we might want some more grayish, uh, some more of the hematite. Oh, guys, I've got so many gorgeous Daniel Smith colors. I can't even tell you. I'm so excited to share them, to share more of them as time goes on. As you saw, they're very earthy. And I think people who like you know, colors like magentas, which is probably my least favorite color on earth, frankly, is fuchsia, magenta. Um, sorry to anyone who is a magenta enthusiast, but um, I really love earth colors and just, I do like primary colors, guys, I do. I think I've probably said in other videos that I don't, but I do like bold, bold, bright colors. I guess as long as they're not in the pink family. All right, I'm having a strong feeling that the crenellation here should not just be white. So let's make it hematite, let's do that. So you can't really see, and it's not dramatic, uh, but some of the hematite that's dried, it's a little bit, a little bit yellowed, which is lovely, which is what we wanted. So there's another color called bloodstone, which is just freaking gorgeous. I mean, breathtaking. I was going to use it to darken some parts of the castle, but I want to tell you why I'm hesitant about that because I like where it's at right now. I like the shading right now. Again, this was supposed to be a quick exercise to just kind of demonstrate the stuff and I don't want to overpaint. I don't want to make the castle darker than it needs to be. And I'm afraid, frankly, I will own my fear. I am afraid that if I use the bloodstone now because it does dry very dark and very grainy that it's going to ruin what we do have. I know I just talked about being brave. I'm being very selective today guys about my courage. I'm using it when it suits me. Oh gosh guys, God, I can't even tell you how much I love these colors. Another thing that you can do that's really wonderful with any watercolor, but especially with Primatech is when it's dry, halfway dry, I feel like it stays workable for a long time. You can do so much with just dipping a wet brush in and letting that do its work. Like look here, when I do that here, I just get more of this gorgeous modeling, M-O-T-T-L-I-N-G, modeling of the granularity here of that that underlying brown whatever's in here I feel like actually with bear this in mind okay so if you decide to go out and get some Primatech watercolors which if you can afford them and you're in the mood I highly highly recommend that is one of the most profound ways you can get the true effects I feel of the Primatech water, watercolors is letting them dry a little bit and then just adding water and seeing the contrast that comes up. I mean, how gorgeous is this? I feel like I'm not doing anything. It's it's all doing it on its own. They're just these gorgeous um, modeled areas. Whew. Do I ever want to go to a chateau, guys? I just desperately do. Hang out there. Appreciate that I'm living in this century and can take an artistic appreciation of their lives without having to live their lives. It's the best of all worlds, right? 
Okay, so let's see. Would it be worth attempting a little bit of bloodstone up here? Is that worth it? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm really scared because I like where everything's at right now. But this is such a great... Okay, so the bloodstone... Okay, Ugh, oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so the bloodstone actually also has this underlying... Um, almost like a beige underneath. It's amazing. Okay, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to use, I don't want this to get too dark up here. I'm going to make sure it does not, because I like where things were at. See, see, that's what happens, guys. That's what happens when you just think to yourself, maybe, maybe, maybe. What I will do, though, I will promise myself is that wherever a little bit of extra dark is needed, I will use the bloodstone. I will get some of that in there because it's just too good not to have. All right, so what color should we make the door? I feel like it should probably match these uh, little hats on top of the towers. Which again, anyone who's like a castle, medieval castle defense expert would, their skin would crawl to hear me describe it as a hat. But you know what? I'm enthusiastic about it, if that counts for anything. Ooh. Ooh. All right, ooh, love it. Okay, so this bronzite, here's a place we can play. So the bronzite, yep, let's just do a streak up like that. Yep, 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 yep. That's what we mean by drama in watercolor, guys. It does its own thing, it has its own mind. And you just have to trust it. I used to hate it so much. I think I've told you guys that. I used to hate it. And now I made friends with it after a long and arduous period of trying to work with it. So I love this bronzite. I love what the bronzite is adding. I love this little castle. I'm imagining that it's abandoned. Maybe it belonged to, I don't know. Honestly, guys, I really, really feel sa really sad for princesses and their fate in this era. I think it is a very bizarre thing that we, I understand why, of course, because there's the lure of all the romance of the, the, the notion of what that life entails, but the reality of it, I really think little girls should know what actually went down for princesses, what their lives were like. I do feel that's important, very much so. Um, so if this did belong to a princess, I'm not gonna pretend like she had a good life because she was a princess. I'm gonna pretend that maybe what happened is, okay, so maybe by some fluke, she was left this property and she was allowed at that time to be a landowning woman. Maybe she got to rule the roost. Maybe she was the one person in this kingdom that got to call the shots for her own life, be uncompromising about it. Maybe she had enough support from her barons or whoever would have had to support her for this to go down this way. Maybe she had enough support from them to continue to live autonomously in this castle. Okay, I like that story. It's gonna be a nice dose of purple here, okay? Don't freak out, it's an experiment. It's all an experiment. We're just gonna see how it goes down, how it looks, if it works. We're gonna be as loose and experimental with the water as we were with everything else, okay? So, ooh, I like it so far. Guys, this color blows me away. It's Amethyst Genuine. Amethyst Genuine. I do love how many names and words there are for purple, how many different types of purple there are. And I just, I love, I love Amethyst. I love that word. I love the color it evokes. And I think Amethyst, I actually don't think a color quite this dark. That just makes things better. Just makes things even better. Okay, let's see what's happening here. So when you have an area of dark contrast, like we do here, it affects everything. 
So you have to think carefully about how you want to do the rest of everything when you have one area like that already. Oh, look at that, guys. Look, because it's a Primatech, look what it's doing. It is just cooperating so beautifully. Oh, guys, water is a horrifically hard thing to draw. I think one day we'll do a water tutorial that I will have to prep for because, like I said, water is not easy and there's so many different ways to do it. You can go realistic, you can go stylized. When I say stylized, in case you don't know, I just mean uh, stylized art is when it is not attempting to look realistic. It's when it's okay for it to just not necessarily look like what it's trying to represent. I'm actually not loving the dark purple in front of the castle, so I'm gonna bleed it out. I'm gonna bleed it and bleed it because I like this faded look. I like that it faded down the side of the mountain and I don't want there to be sudden harsh line there with the water that we're seeing in the front. Again, I want the focus of this picture to really be the castle. I'd like to think it's enough for there to be a few little, a few little hints of purple. And I'd like it to fade into the distance. Let's, uh, let's make sure it fades. I don't like the harsh line behind the mound. I like it to be faded because then the eye is naturally drawn to the contrast in the foreground and the subject in the foreground. When you have too much dark horizon line, too much dark in the background, it detracts. So I would have done well to remember. I really would have, okay, this is a good example. This is like, do as I say, don't do as I do type deal. Where if I, if you like the contrast of thing, which I do, I love the contrast of what's on this mound right now. There's no need to add so much contrast for the water. You know, no need as I add more. Now I think I'm being a little more deliberate about it. This is the lunar violet. Okay. It's a little more acceptable to me. I'm not in love with it still, but it's a little better. Okay, so then behind, in the background, I do want something in the background. So we still have this lovely serpentine green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a very, very faint, very faint, just trees. Yeah, trees behind it. I don't want it to take away the contrast, the lovely contrast we have in the foreground. These can just be sort of spring trees. Because they're Primatech, they're gonna have that lovely, um, brownish creep in. I feel like this is a sweet, gentle little chateau that anyone can come to. I like to imagine she treated her mistress well. And also, you know, what if these walls could talk? The things she'd tell us. Like, how amazing would that be? If she could tell us what her mistress had lived through and the things she's seen and all of that. So I think I'm gonna leave this alone right now. Okay, oh, 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 one last thing I wanted to tell you. Okay, interestingly, usually I hate day glow colors of any kind. But you know what, right now I can forgive this right here. I can forgive this bright green right there because it is one of the Primatech features and it is just kind of snaking out. Ooh, ooh, maybe that's why they called it Serpentine Genuine, huh? But look what we did. I mean, look at, let's look at this picture and look at all the effects we created with these Primatech colors. And I feel like that we created effectively. So. I don't know how well you can see, but the castle itself, it does look like stone. It absolutely looks like stone. The first time I saw the hematite, that was the first thing I thought. You know, we did ivy, we did this gorgeous, we did the natural look of a hillside, which of course is not all green. I'm gonna leave it. I'm probably gonna work on it a little bit. Again, I really wanna practice leaving well enough alone and not doing a whole lot more to it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna take watercolor pencils when this is dry and maybe enhance a couple things but not much. I'm not gonna mess with it much. That is my that is my promise to you. And uh, I'm so glad you joined me on this. All right, y'all. See you later. Bye.